What's up, y'all? Uh, or I guess what's the word is the intro for this channel. This is not the ramble today. Um, it might have a ramble feel, but it's not the ramble. I've been seeing a lot of my YouTube, other YouTube friends out there do like these daily NBA talk where they basically, they kind of ramble. It's usually unscripted and everything. Um, and they talk about things that are on their mind. And I'm like, why can't I do that? And I'm not saying this is daily because I promise you it's not. Y'all know I got this thing with commitment. <laughs> That's actually hilarious to say. Because uh, I know people in my life would probably agree with that statement. Um, I can't guarantee you daily, but as I'm recording this, the Houston Rockets were just eliminated from the playoffs. And I want to talk about the Houston Rockets specifically in today's video. Um, I, <laughs> I've i been having a lot of fun at the expense of Houston Rockets fans lately, and I'm sure they don't. Should I sit up? I'll, I'll sit like this. I'm sure they don't enjoy that. Um, I, being a fan is heartbreaking, especially being a fan of a team that's good, but just not good enough. That's probably that's probably even more heartbreaking than being a part of a team like mine that just sucks. Because at least I know every day we're going to be bad. If you're a fan of a good team, you have some aspirations to some extent, and to see them not reach that is probably hurts. Uh, the Houston Rockets are going to have – are in the weirdest position in the NBA? Do I want to say that? Because obviously, again, their team is good enough to continue to be the four through six seed, three through six seed every single year. But it's probably their ceiling, right? And they may have capped out that one year where they were this close from beating the Warriors. Um, this offseason, they made some significant things happen. They traded Chris Paul for Russell Westbrook. They traded Chris Paul and some picks for Russell Westbrook to, to try to get a new feel to the small ball. Oh, no, this is before small ball, to get a new feel to the team altogether. Uh, though we can agree James Harden and Chris Paul didn't completely mesh on court, it was way better than what we got with Russell Westbrook and James Harden, right? Um, and then halfway through the season, they realized that. They are more realized that, like, in order for Russell Westbrook to be effective, he can't play in our current system and our current team. So they traded their center away, had P.J. Tucker coming to the offense like, brother, I know you've been a primarily small four power four your entire career. But now, you're a center. And shout out to P.J. Tucker for accepting that and being great at it. But they had to change up the whole way they played basketball. Well, not the whole way because they're still running this five out. But they had to open up space for Russell Westbrook to do Russell Westbrook type things. And for like a two to three month period, Russell Westbrook was doing exactly that. He was averaging 27, 28 points per game for multiple months. And that was right before the trade deadline. And people were like, man, he don't deserve to be an all-star. And then he hit that and then he got into the all-star game. So shout out to him for that. So it started to look like something cool right they were running a small ball and I was rooting for it because I think the evolution of basketball every year every couple of years we see something new right we see the big starting to shoot threes we see everybody starting to shoot threes um these small ball lineups small ball closeout lineups is something we saw with the Warriors but the Daryl Morey and the Houston Rockets had decided that we don't want to just end the game that way we want to play the entire game that way and it was Draymond Green actually about a week or so ago that was um when this series started between the Lakers and the Rockets he tweeted something along the lines of like every center in the NBA better hope the Lakers win this series because if they don't then we're about to see some change in the NBA because if the Houston Rockets were successful in their small ball lineup it's a GG for the JaVale McGee's of the world it's a GG for Rudy Gobert who's up for an extension because every team will look at that and be like okay we can mimic that we won't have a PJ Tucker but we can mimic that with somebody else and unfortunately they felt they fell short they fell short and now that they did fall short, they got people on Twitter trying to figure out, okay, what is next? Because Russell Westbrook in this series was awful. He had one game where I was like, okay, that's the Russ we know. But overall, he was awful. And I know he's coming off a quad injury, and I know he's coming off a COVID-19 thing, and I, I commend him a lot for even coming to the bubble and playing because those are two significant things. But I still have to look at the results on the court and, and just analyze it. And my analysis is that he was bad. You know, the L.A. Lakers looked at game one and was like, okay, we're just going to not guard him unless he's within five feet of the rim. And it worked to a perf it worked to a T with a quad injury and coming off COVID-19 that hits like, I don't know, I don't know, I'm not a COVID expert, but I know it hit the lungs, I know it hit the blood. Like play p players that have tested positive for COVID-19, this would actually be a really cool study that somebody could do. Players that tested positive, I would love to see how they play before and after, right? 
Mo Bamba is a player that tested positive and really couldn't even play in the bubble because he was still rehabbing. I know everybody has re everybody that has had a case of this has reacted differently, but I would love to see the numbers on before I tested positive for COVID and after because it ha it does impact people differently, and you can tell it impacted Russell Westbrook. I think the reason why people on Twitter um, are laughing at Russell Westbrook or saying the certain things about him is because even in games where they were down by 25, he was barking. And that's just, you know, like, why? Like, why? Especially when you really realize your impact, because he even said it in the postgame interview after the one game where he turned the ball over at the end of the game trying to throw it to, it may have been Eric Gordon, Robert Covington, or whatever. He said, like, I'm just running around out there. I got to figure out what I'm doing. So he realizes, he can realize, and that's that's one of the great things about Russell Westbrook, I guess, is that he could realize when he was not being an impactful player, and yet he was still yapping at the mouth down by 20. And I'm not even just talking about the Rondo thing. I'm talking even before that. Anyway, so with that, um, you have Russell Westbrook, who, again, I just mentioned, he has, I, I don't want to say anybody has an untradeable contract because the world has seen people, we, we say untradeable contracts, and then somehow we, got, we get a team that's willing to accept that, that contract. Russell Westbrook, I'm looking at it here. He is 31 years old. He made $38 million this year. He's guaranteed 41, 43, and then a 46 player option. You think he's going to turn down a 46 player option at the age of 35? No, he will not. You're guaranteeing him all that money. You're also guaranteeing 31-year-old 31, 31 James Harden that money. Eric Gordon just signed an extension where he'll be paid $20 million in, in the year 2023. They just don't have room to maneuver. And because of that, this small ball lineup that had been unsuccessful this year will probably be back next year. And I was just talking. And, and listen, if you're watching this video, please understand that my Twitter account, for the most part, it's n normally for jokes, especially like you should be able to gauge when I'm joking. Like when I put up a tweet that says Westbrook for Blake Griffin, I'm obviously joking. Even though I think that Blake Griffin with a small ball lineup would be interesting. That's just that's not a trait that I would see happening for either side. You know what I'm saying? So I was just I was just shooting in and having some fun. Somebody re replied like, Kenny, you sure? And I said, no, I'm just talking. I'm just having fun on Twitter. That's what Twitter is, that's what Twitter is for. So now the Houston Rockets have to figure this out because not only do they have these these guaranteed contracts and they're still paying players like they're paying Jeff Green, right? But they're also paying Jeff Green from a previous time he was in Houston. They're still paying him from that. Um, so you have all of this money. They're sitting at like 13th in the NBA as far as overall payroll. None of the money comes off the books this season except for Tyson Chandler, who will probably retire. It was sad to say. Uh, Thabo Cephalos will probably retire. It was sad to say. And then the rest, these are guaranteed contracts across the board for most of these players. So they don't have any any wiggle room. So you're going to bring this team back. Or if there is a GM willing to take on Russell Westbrook, you're not going to get your value for it. So, so think about this. And I think it was Click Production. Shout out to my boy Click because he even reminded me. I'm going to go look at his tweet. He reminded me of something that like I completely, completely, completely forgot about. And it had to do with what this team looked like like two, three years ago. It had to do with this team, what this team looked like just a few a few years ago. And it was along the lines of like, hold on, here, here. The tweet was something along the lines that they had Lou Will, Montrez Harold, blank and blank. They turned it into Chris Paul, and then they turned Chris Paul into Russell Westbrook. Overall progression sounds terrible. Sounds terrible. And Daryl Morey is my guy. Um, because I I Daryl Morey is my guy. Um, I think he's a genius. He may have just struck out on this one, and that's part of the job of being a GM. There's no perfect GM. As much as we love Sam Presti, he gave James Harden to Daryl Morey. You know what I'm saying? So there's no perfect GM out there. Um, and I appreciate him for experimenting because, again, he could have evolutionized the game of basketball again just by testing things out. But here's Click's tweet. If they go from – it was Pat Bev, Montrez Harrell, and Lou Will. Imagine all three of those players right here, right now on the Houston Rockets um, for to – to Chris Paul, to Russell Westbrook, and then in this hypothetical situation, again, I was just throwing out the Trey Blake for Russell Westbrook, and he said if they go from Westbrook to Blake, that would be incredible, and it would have been incredible, like in the, in the negative aspect of it. Um, but it's just such a such a weird situation because Mike D'Antoni was on the last year of his deal, and then early in the season they basically had said they weren't going to bring him back, and then just recently they were like, you know what, we might bring him back, and I just don't, I can't imagine another coach coming into this team with what they have now and making it better or doing anything with it and that that's that's the today we saw or not just today but this entire series we saw the problem with going all in on one scheme because once that scheme 
is broken up like the Lakers had with, with Russell Westbrook and the Houston Rockets, then you have no place to go. Once you throw the double team and you let Russ shoot, where do you go? They don't have anything else. The great teams are able to read and react, right? Like the greatest teams of all time. Oh, you're going to take this away? Okay, now this opens up. And maybe that's Dan Tony. Maybe that's just the roster they constructed. But when you're doubling, James Harden, he can't create for himself or anybody else. And then you let Russell Westbrook just do, do nothing on the court. Who do you rely on? Eric Gordon is cool, but I'm okay with letting Eric Gordon do his thing. Nobody else in his team is, is like creators. And that's a problem. And that's a problem. Um, they have players, man, and I've I've been having a lot of fun reading the the tweets and going on to Reddit just to see what the Houston Rockets fans have to say. Daryl Morey ended up tweeting, and boy, his mentions got blew up. He he tweeted saying like, "Thank you to everybody, uh, congrats to the Lakers, thank you Disney and the NBA employees who work long hours to make the bubble possible." Which is yeah, shout out to them because the fact that we've had zero cases is still kind of wild to me. Um, but shout out to all the people that's working in, in the bubble. And then the replies came. The replies came. Get rid of Dan Tony and West Brick now is one reply. Trade for Al Horford. I'm begging you. Um, the small ball experiment has to stop. Trade everyone except for Harden and Covington. Literally trade everybody. Coaching staff has to go too. Um, yeah. Yeah, and that's just the way it goes. And then I think um, it just goes on. Trade Harden. He's predictably bad when it come, when it matters the most. He has proven year after year what he is when it's time to win. He is not a winner. He's a stat, sheets, filler, nothing more. Fans, fans are hot. And if somebody replied to it, we'll take him on the Chicago Bulls <laughs> right now. He said he's the best player the Houston Rockets ever had. Okay. All right, Mr. Guy. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to relax. Do you not know the name Hakeem Elijahwan? Let's let's relax. You're making us Bulls fans look bad here. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a very interesting thing. I'm sure we're gonna see a lot of players pop up in a tray finder. Actually, the the Al Horford thing is something I've seen in a tray finder for a couple weeks now. So people are gonna start throwing that out even more because obviously what we have on the court right now just isn't working out. So that was cool. That's what I have to say about the Houston Rockets. It is a ramble. Shout out to the Lakers for making it to the conference finals for the first time in a long time. It's cool to see that. Shout out to LeBron for still looking as great as he does. Um, is there any silver lining to, to the Houston Rockets experiment or anything? I mean, like if we would have saw somebody blossom, that would be a silver lining. I mean, I still believe that the Robert Covington trade was a huge W. You know, he, he definitely plays his role very, very well. But other than that, there's not really that – that many great things to say about the Rockets right now. I'm very interested to see if they're able to do anything this offseason. If anybody is, it's going to be Daryl Morey, so I'm interested in that. And that's it. This is kind of a, it was kind of a ramble. I wasn't scripted or anything, so leave a like. Let me know if you want more of these. I'm gone. Peace.